Um, well, it's obvious that if you look at the history and uh, recent history, um, you know, the spiritual values, religious values have been disappearing, you know, from the Western yes. um, society. Um, it's advancements in technology um, and in science um, with its drive for economic goals, you know, has actually forced it to, to leave behind an incredible treasure which I believe we have. You know. <laughs> yes. Now the problem is we appear to be backwards because we're kind of, mm. to some Westerners we appear, well, you know, what have we produced? Actually when we were at the forefront of our strength in Islam, we were yes. at the forefront also of science yes. and developing those things which human being needs. Um, you know, in so many fields of science, of optics and medicine, and, uh, geography and uh, anthropology. So therefore I think that we need to reclaim this educational uh, ground and, and that way I think that we can also make sure that, that we can infuse today's world with spirit because we, we have the answers, as, as far as I can see we have the answers but a lot of Muslims also are not delivering those answers no, to, the, to the West we're kind of, you know, we're looking at our pieces, our land, our borders and, and really we should be talking about universal issues Very true. and you know that's that's what I believe Islam is you, you pointed out something really nice because sometimes when we talk about values a lot of people will go like of course this is important you know all these problems we have with pedophilia or uh, drug abuses and you know these kind of issues that are more and more available and especially in some so-called civilized or advanced or modern societies but this uh, this issue you just pointed out I think needs to talk a little more about it and definitely I I remember when I was uh, a teenage or even later on in my studies and for the large majority of, uh, of the studies you can have in Europe or in Western societies you would get very very little information about the beautiful heritage we have from uh, Muslims or from Arabs generally talking. Mm. Very often we hear it comes from the Romans and mm. the Romans they had it from who knows where you know it's, it's not really specified that not so long back before actually uh, people came from uh, North uh, Africa or from different uh, Arabic countries we had very little here in Europe just to start with Spain for instance people used to wear their clothes until they were completely uh, finished because they didn't even wash them they didn't know what soap was they didn't have mathematics even medicine all these issues I mean go to the small thing to the you know the, even the luxury though it's not recommended in Islam but the silk and all these materials coffee and even the furniture at home all of these issues come from the Arabs and the Islamic culture would you like to tell a word about that well, I think you explained it all. Most, most of it has been explained uh, in your question because, again, people are locked out of information. Information which we know <coughs> we have in Islam, in our history, uh, connected to you know, the, the, the kind of um, a contribution which Islam made to civilization. If you look at any history book today, Western history book, you know, you'll find a few pages, this is you know, a few this pages is and you'll see so much about the Romans, yes. you know, okay, uh, I don't know why they don't mention more about the Greeks actually because maybe yeah. Greece had more influence on the Romans, but anyway, um, there's so much kind of imbalance there, that's where we come down again, it is not a matter of waiting for others to do this work, it's a matter of Muslims, you know, getting up and devoting themselves to this work. It's not, we can't point fingers and blame everybody because of our situation. No, no, definitely. We have to change, yes. you know, our attitude mm -hmm. and contribute. Definitely. That's how we did it in the past, that's how we got to do it now. We're going to do it, inshallah. Let's just go to a, a second song and uh, very nice words again that I'd like to share with uh, the viewers. Boys for Duha, the morning light, the sun has turned from red to white. Boys for Tariq, a path to walk upon. And Ba is for Bill, a shadow. And A is for Ilam, the thing to know, to make our knowledge grow in Islam. 
What a beautiful song. Um, could you tell us a word like as a conclusion because we are getting to the end of uh, the program about your work and uh, whatever you feel, you know, just you'd like to share with the viewers as a last word basically. Um, yeah, what you've seen today is, is an effort uh, which we've been uh, working on uh, to, let's say, to convey the message of Islam through our uh, company, or, or Mountain of Light, and we have a lot of, I think, a lot of talent which is going to come out very soon in the future, and um, I believe that if we can inspire the youth um, to regain their love of Islam mm. and their adherence and their belief, um, I think that tomorrow, inshallah, will look better. <laughs> Very nice conclusion. Thank you. I think we have quite a few, um, a few more issues we'd like to talk about and discuss, like uh, some of your achievements back in UK and some of your future goals, and therefore you've accepted to be our guest on the next program. That will be with a friend of yours, I believe you will introduce to us his name. His name is Zayn Bika, and he's one of those bright uh, new stars or uh -huh. let's say new uh, Islamic stars. Great, that's a really nice one. Thank you so much for being here with us today and don't uh, miss it next week. We will have two celebrities, Islamic celebrities I believe, so be with us. Bye-bye. Assalamu -bye. alaikum. <laughs>